Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. Have I got an easy project for you. If you've been confused about how to put binding on anything, I've kind of taken care of that problem for you. This is a no binding pot holder. Really easy, really quick and looks great. So let's take a look at it. Okay, now it looks like it has binding strips on it, but there are no strips. So let me turn it over to the back. Now here is the back. This is one large piece of fabric and all I did was fold the edges over to the front and then stitched it here really really simple process to do so let me show you some other samples what they look like what's fun is you can go through all your scraps and just begin putting all kinds of pot holders together these are great gifts and start stocking up for Christmas people love pot holders for Christmas and here's one in which I used panel fabrics okay now if you don't know what panel fabrics are here it is I've got this piece of fabric here and there's coffee cups all over it and all I did was cut the coffee cup out and then turned it into a pot holder look at how many pot holders you could get out of this one piece of fabric now if you're confused and you're not sure what I mean by binding strips here's another pot holder this has binding strips on it and here it is on the back so this is a quite a step you've got to first cut the strips out then stitch the strips together then go and fold it press and fold them in half and then you've got to stitch it on the front wrap it around the corners and then stitch it on the back so it's a long long process so if you don't have a lot of time this is a great choice so let's get started okay so this is what you need for the front you need one eight inch square of fabric that you want to show on the front for the back you need one ten inch square of fabric and then uh, in the middle between those two layers you can use two layers of cotton batting that are eight inches square you'll need to cut out two of them or you can use one layer of cotton batting and one layer of Insulbrite so if you prefer Insulbrite feel free to use that in this uh, project so now let me show you how to get it started all right after you cut out all your fabrics take your 10 inch square and here's the back the front side of my 10 inch square you want that to be face down away from you and to where you're now looking at the back of this fabric then take your two layers of cotton batting and your fabric for the front put those three together and then center it inside of this 10 inch square okay so now let's go on to the next step now you need to do your top stitching do you see all these little stitches this is really easy now I used a decorative stitch which is this wavy line but you don't have to use that you can use a straight stitch if you prefer so if you're going to do a straight stitch this is how I recommend you can go side to side so start in the middle and do your stitching then go about two inches out on the other side of the center line and do one on each side then turn it and do the same thing start in the center and then go here now if you prefer the wavy line you can still go side to side you still go about it the same way as the previous one start in the center go out and then turn and do the other side also if you like diagonal stitching here it is with a straight stitch and you just go from corner to corner first then go out a couple of inches go out a couple of more inches then turn it repeat it go to the center go out a couple of inches go out a couple of inches and here's what it looks like with that wavy line 
So you have a lot of choices and a lot of different looks when you're doing this. All right, so let's go to the next step. Whoops, let me go back. I forgot one little step here. Sorry about that. Now we're gonna trim, I'm gonna move this in a little bit, Mr. Cameraman. Now we're gonna trim some of this fabric off the corners. Okay, so now take your ruler and I'm gonna work with this number two line right here. If I use the number one, it doesn't work so well. So go in a little bit on your ruler and line it up on this corner and straight across to this corner. Okay, corner to corner. So I'm gonna put my number two line on there and I've got it all lined up. Now, right here is my half inch mark. I want that half inch mark right on the tip of this corner here. So I'm gonna move that up. Still make sure that this line is going corner to corner. And then with your rotary cutter, go ahead and trim that off so that it looks like this, okay? So now, once you've got that done, you're gonna do all four corners, all four. Now you're gonna take this edge here and you're gonna fold it to where it just barely covers the tip of that corner, just barely covers it. So you're gonna fold over and with your iron, press all four corners. So let me show you what that looks like. See, so I've got them folded over. Now, you're gonna go and fold this edge over, all the other straight edges. Fold them over one quarter inch, and I prefer pressing with an iron. If you finger press, it doesn't come out very good, so I don't advise you doing that. Now you're gonna take this edge, fold it over, okay? Make it nice and snug, and then you're going to stitch from this corner all the way over to this corner, and let me get my little pointy thing, this corner right there. Okay, so you're stitching across. And go to the opposite side and do the same thing. So when you're done, you've got both sides looking like this. Okay, stitch there. Now you're gonna do the other two opposite sides, so let me do this. You're gonna fold this over, and actually let me get my next sample. Sorry, Mr. Cameraman. All right, so here we are. Now you're gonna take this edge, fold it over. Now you wanna make sure that this diagonal folded edge here goes over this one. It's gonna go over it just a little bit, all right? So pull it nice and snug across there so you have it overlapped. And now once you've got that done, you're gonna stitch right along here and do a few stitches back and forth to secure it. Stitch up to this corner. Now leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, turn the pot holder, and stitch all the way down to this next corner. Let me get this folded over to here. And then again, leave the needle down, turn the pot holder, and then stitch down to this corner do a few stitches back and forth to secure it. Then go to the opposite side and do the same thing. So when you're done, all of your edges should look like this. Alrighty, so let me get the one that's completed. Here it is, okay? And now I'm gonna turn it over and that's what it'll look like on the back. So all of the fabric is folded over. Now, if you love binding and you prefer binding, remember, there's lots of uh, projects that is on the Sewing Room channel that you can do for pot holders. So let me show you some samples, okay? Here's one, this has got binding on it. And as you're looking at these, I want you to remember that there is a playlist at the end of the video that you can click on that'll take you to all of the pot holders on the Sewing Room channel. But if you still prefer no binding pot holders, 
This one, same thing, no binding. It's called Easy Pot Holder. So this is also a great choice if you're a beginner. Then here's a couple more. Here is Pinwheel Pot Holder. A lot of fun to create. Here's another four patch. Now, if you like applique, machine applique, here's one, you applique the hard on. And then this next one is really popular on the Sewing Room channel. It's called Pinch Me. And you just reach inside and grab the handles of the pot that you want to lift up and carry. This one is a lot of fun, a little bit more work, but it's a lot of fun. Well, I hope you try one of the pot holders. Try this new one. I think you're gonna really enjoy it, especially if you don't have a lot of time. You can really pump out those pot holders really, really quick. Now, if you wanna keep informed of all the videos that come out on the Sewing Room channel, there's one to two videos released every week. So so click on subscribe. Now the subscribe button is down in the right hand corner. It's red. It says subscribe. Or you can click on my face up in the upper right hand corner. They'll both take you to that subscribe menu. Once you've done that, enter your email address. Then YouTube's going to send you a brief email every time I have a new video. So you won't miss out. You're going to keep up on what's going on. All those fun projects that we put out. Now, I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and don't forget, happy sewing.